one of the simplest and most requested features I have for App Script is putting a date stamp somewhere when an edit occurs. So let's show how to do that. Here's the data set I already have set up. I have my project name, my region, my contractor, and then this is really what we're looking at today. I want a completed date whenever the completed column is marked true. That's what we're looking for here. Okay. So let's jump into the script and make that happen. As usual, we're looking at a simple on edit script with e pass as a variable to make sure that I get the information from the edit object itself. So first thing I wanna do is make sure that the edit occurred at the correct place and that it was the correct type of edit. What I mean by that, I don't wanna mark a completed date if the contractor changes, nor do I want to mark a date if we unselect a checkbox. Right, this is a completed date, not an uncompleted date. So let's do if e.range.column start is not equal to four, because over here my completed box is on column four or D, or if e.value is not equal to true. Return. So if either of these conditions are met, or in other words, if the edit occurs anywhere except four, or if the value of the edit is not true, then quit the script. We don't need to do anything else. Let's go ahead and test that. Just make sure that part itself is working. So let's do in whenever an edit occurs and log out if the correct type and location of edit occurs. Let's go ahead and say I change the contractor here to 96B. We can check the logs. Here's the one we just completed. I got in, but no out. Now I want to do one here. I got in and out. So we can see that the if statement is working correctly. Go ahead and delete that. Now I'm going to declare a date object, let D equals new date. I have done this without doing a declaration by itself, but it's a lot clearer to see it this way. And then rather than declaring the sheet and declaring the range, I'm going to use the offset. So e.range.offset simply moves us a number of rows or columns from the range's top left cell. Okay, since the edit is going to occur in a single cell, D something, and I want to put the date into E something of the same row, I can simply do zero for the row offset, we're not moving any rows, and one for the column. So move over one column and no rows. Dot set value, D. Let's go test it. There we go. So I completed this and it jumped into the complete date. Excellent. Now this can be a little bit messy. For some things you absolutely do want the full date time string. For some things though, you really just want the date. Up here we can change this to dot two local date string. And now we can see up here, it's only outputting the date itself, no time associated with that. That could also be done in the value setting. That can be useful if we have up here a completed time and we actually wanna keep those separate. I could also do a two locale time string so here I'm just declaring the date entirely, here getting the date, here getting the time. Oops. And of course that needs offset two instead of one as we just saw that error. Saving it would be good. All right, now I got the date and I got the time. 
I'm going to leave that because I think it's good to see why those functional errors occurred. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that in so you can see what that process was to make sure it was right and where the errors came in. But as it is, all I really want is the completed date. So let's get rid of the rest of those. So that's it for a single run. What if we're doing something like this? Now I have three different stages of the project. I have an accepted, an approved, and a completed stage, all of which have their own checkboxes and their own accepted date. It's actually really simple to extend this script. I want to say that calls for columns, and we're looking at column four, six, and eight. Four, six, eight. Now, instead of directly asking this, I want to say if calls.index of e.range.column start equals negative one. Let's go look at the signature again. The index of returns the first index returns the index of the first occurrence of a value in an array or returns negative one if no fa if there is no element found. Okay? So if the range where the column where the edit happened is not found in this array where we're asking for either columns four, six, or eight, then also return. Otherwise it should do the same thing. There it is on four. Six, eight. Okay, so the exact same thing works. All we did was declare an array filled with the valid columns for the edit. That's it. I want to show one other way this sometimes gets brought up. Here I still have an accepted, approved, and completed. However, I only have a single date column. In this case, it doesn't matter when the exception happened, when the accepting happens and the approved happened, the completed, all we care about in this case is when the last update, when the last one of these occurred. In this case, there are a couple of ways that we could declare that if, I'm gonna declare it the other way so we can see that. So if e.range.column start is less than four, or e.range.column start is greater, four, five, six, and six, and of course, or if the value is not equal to true, then return. So rather than declaring exactly which columns we're looking at, I'm just saying, look, if it's Lower than, if, if the edit occurred on A, B, or C, or before D, don't do anything. And if it occurred after F, don't do anything. This can be especially useful if it's a larger range or an otherwise contiguous range, right? So if I'm doing C through I, then I'm easily just going to say, hey, if the edit occurred before C or after I, don't worry about it. But if I'm doing an incongruous or incontinuous range where I'm looking at D, F, H, A, D, Z, anything like that, I'm going to want to declare the array rather than this notation. Now, this offset no longer applies either. In this case, I am going to want to do a normal declaration. So e dot source dot get active sheet dot get range e dot range dot row start so we're getting the row where the edit occurred column seven and we can check that by using the column formula here to make sure dot set value d now 
Oh, let's check this one. Yes. 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 So now all three columns work based on the same function that is looking for column seven uh, in the same row on the sheet where the edit occurred. So any of these three work, it really depends on what your need is. Do you just have a single date column that needs to be marked with a date whenever an edit occurs? Go ahead and use this one. You have multiple dates, but they're all the same distance apart from the column of checking. Use this one. Do you have a continuous range where there's one single date column for the entire thing? Go ahead and use this one. Any of them work. All of them work. As usual, like, subscribe, go ahead and connect with me, and I'll see you soon.